Hey everyone, welcome back to The Stationary Writer. Today's video is all about my method for commonplacing. I've had a lot of requests for this video at this point, um, and I want to preface with saying that this is probably going to be a bit of a two-part thing. So today I'm just going to show you what my methods are, and uh, I'll talk about like a little bit about the evolution of where I got to, and um, kind of like why I do this practice, and then I'm working on another video where, and it's going to involve this book, <laughs> um, but I want to talk a little bit about the history of this practice. I think it's really interesting, so I'm probably going, and this, you know, um, I recommend this book if you're interested in this topic, and I also recommend, um, I've recommended her a lot, so <laughs> if you don't already subscribe, she has a substack, uh, Jillian Hess, it's called Noted, and she publishes articles all about uh, notes, note-taking, commonplacing, um, creative practices with notebooks, that kind of thing. And uh, I just think it's really fascinating. So um, I will definitely be leaning on some of her work and research. Um, I'll probably do it like a commonplace with me style video on the book. So um, anyway, so that's that. But for today, we're just going to talk about how I do this. So. Um, if you're completely new to this idea, basically a commonplace book is, it's kind of a broad thing that people can adapt to really whatever they want, but the foundation of it is collecting uh, information or quotes or artifacts that you find personally valuable. Um, and there's a lot of ways to go about this. It can range from a very like almost scientific study type of commonplace book to um, almost more of a scrapbook like albums and um, I think she has pictures but yeah I mean like albums and per like just personal collections of like your media consumption. Um, I think it's really interesting that there's even like the idea of collaging comes into place in these books which I think you see a lot of people do in like modern commonplace books as well. But anyway, so I I was drawn to this. I've probably been a note taker like, <laughs> you know, like most of my life. Um, I don't think I started calling it commonplacing until a couple years ago, but um, I think at the core, it's really about taking notes on, on things that you're learning or media, media you're consuming. Um, I treat it as a tool, I see it as a tool for someone who is a knowledge seeker. I don't think that's the only way to use this practice, I just think that that is fundamentally how I use it. Um, I love to read and I love to read deeply to try and understand the books that I read. Um, so some of the terms, like she talks about a lot of historical figures in the book and some of the terms that have been used, you know, <laughs> instead of, and I, the reason I mentioned these is I think they're they're helpful for thinking about what a commonplace book is, but people have called their commonplace book many different things over the years. So um, flycatcher, adversaria, quarry, and philosophical miscellany uh, are a couple interesting um, things that people have called their notebooks over the years. And they all kind of rely on this fundamental system of collecting quotations and information for your personal use. And, um, I want to say for people that are intimidated about the idea of starting a commonplace book, you have probably already used concepts of commonplacing, uh, probably in your like primary education. So the idea that you like, I think you would do like a book report in an English class, right? The idea that you're expected to read a book, maybe highlight some passages, and then use those use passages from the book in a discussion about the book is very like that is derived from commonplacing practices so um if you're feeling intimidated just uh keep that in mind that you probably already have the skills to do commonplacing and uh you could jump in with something right away so um again i i I, before I jump in, I just want to clarify again that, you know, there are a lot of different ways to commonplace out there, and I think that a broader view of that will be in my history video, um, but as far as how I use this tool, 
I don't view like the aesthetic uh, product of a commonplace page as like my main goal. I do want my pages to look nice, but it's not the primary goal. Uh, my primary goal is learning and like creative inspiration. Um, so I just want to make sure I I elaborate on my purpose a little bit, just so you know what kind of commonplace book you're looking at, and um, you know if that if that rings true to what you would like to use a commonplace book for, then you know hopefully this will be especially valuable to me to you. But um, anyway, so first off, what are what do you what do you commonplace on? <laughs> um, so the majority of the things I would say like most of my commonplace notes are on books. Um, I will commonplace on pretty much any media though that I consume. So I have podcast notes, I have, um, I will write about films. Um, sometimes it's just a quote from a film, but sometimes I might write about it more, uh, you know, film and television. Um, I will commonplace on, uh, like art and inspiration, just anything that I find inspiring. Um, I do, like, I sometimes do pages that are just quotes, um, uh, and sometimes I have pages that are a lot more, um, what's the word, text to, like, think through something. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you can, you can comp commonplace on really anything, uh, that you, again, the whole point of commonplacing is that you collect things that are, that you feel are, uh, relevant or interesting to you. Uh, so I think you could commonplace on, you know, if you're into like, uh, gardening, you could come, you could collect like information on the things you're growing. Um, like I would say any kind of hobby, you could probably commonplace on information about that hobby. I think, uh, one thing I see a lot of is people make little notebooks about like the video games they're playing and I would call those common like that to me that is commonplacing um so you really can just take anything you're interested in and um store that information on a page and call it commonplacing in my opinion I don't think it's it's like again coming from like the even the historical lens is a very broad shifting practice um so i don't think there's a right or a wrong way to do it um so these are just some of the pages i've been flipping through here um i'm gonna talk a little bit about like uh sh i guess i don't know structurally what i use but you know the tools for commonplacing um just because um, I mean, I'm still somewhat of a stationary channel, so <laughs> it's relevant. Um, I have evolved, uh, my system a little bit over the years. Uh, originally, and again, before I even knew the term commonplacing, but I was just like an avid note taker, I used digital tools. Um, so I've, I've tried, um, Obsidian. I've played with Obsidian a little bit. Uh, I think it's a complicated tool and it honestly gets in the way of the practice for me. Um, I use, the thing I use probably most often was, uh, an app called Bear. Um, so if you're looking for a digital solution, I think, like, probably Bear is one of the best because of the tagging system. Um, but ultimately I moved away from digital because I really wanted, like, I think writing, well, I don't think that. There are studies that show that, like, writing information helps you retain it better. Um, and I personally find that I engage with this material more deeply when I am writing it. Um, also, I really, really love, this is like, uh, a completely unscientific thing, but I just love, um, the physical browsability of pages. Um, I don't know if there's a better word for that, but like, being able to just flip through real pages is something that I, I really enjoy. And I always find a lot of just inspiration from flipping back through pages, so... Um, that's another reason I like, you know, the physical aspect. Um, so then I think I, like, you know, I used to be a Bujo person, so I definitely have pages in my bullet journals from the past that would ultimately be commonplace pages, but they're just all in there. Um, I started doing, you know, once I was familiar with the term commonplacing, I started doing it a little more formally in, um, my, uh, TN, so a separate, uh, traveler's notebook insert. And I do want to show what that looks like a little bit. Um, this is one I have from, uh, 
I guess it's from last year, yeah. But um, I think that the pages look, I mean, I love Traveler's Notebook in general. I still use one for other things. So um, I love Traveler's Notebook and I love how the pages look. Um, but there's one reason, there's a, um, like, there's one big reason that I switched away from it, um, which I'm going to talk about. But um, here's just a little look at what those pages kind of looked like. And this is one I actually really loved. <laughs> I basically wrote about the, the way that they make Arushi pens, which I think is really, really cool. Um, so you can already start to see uh, there are some structural commonalities in how these pages are set up. And um, again, there's no right or wrong way to do it, but I would say that it is pretty common to use um, both a tagging system and a margin um, with common placing and I guess I'll start with uh, so I'll start with kind of I guess metadata uh, for commonplace pages but uh, the way I typically structure my pages is you know I always have a header of course of you know what the note is about and then I I typically have, um, I guess you would, yeah, I guess you would call it like a tag. Um, and my way of doing this has changed a little bit and I think it will continue to change, but I do try to identify like where the information is coming from, um, and kind of what it's about. Um, but I, one of the things I really want to like clarify about this is, um, yes, indexing is a part of commonplacing just because, um, you know, the title of this book is how they organized information. So part, you know, part of like, part of collecting this information is in some sense being able to find things again if you want to. Um, I don't think that's necessarily my, like a huge priority to me. So... I, you know, at the beginning, and you, I don't know if you can tell, but this is actually, <laughs> I have taped in a, a different index over my first index, and that's because I had a really hard time figuring out what my index should be, and I kind of kept, like, you can see underneath there, I have a different index. So, like, I, I had a hard time figuring out, like, how to organize my stuff, and honestly, I still, like, I don't, I'm not currently using any kind of dot tagging system in this because I find it really hard to distill what, how things should be organized. And this could be a me problem, but I just kept, like, I kept spending so much time, <laughs> like, looking at other people's commonplace books and what their tag systems were and changing mine that I was like, I'm not even taking any notes anymore. <laughs> this is really frustrating. So, um, I think that is a big warning I want to give is that I think it's much better to just take notes first and accumulate notes. And then if you, you know, like if you, if you go the TN route, right, finish a whole insert of commonplace notes and then go through them at the end. And if you see recurring patterns that you want to distill into a tag to create an index at the end, I think that'd be a much better approach than trying to like decide at the beginning what your system's going to be. Um, that could seem obvious, but I, I think that's just something I went through that I want to call out. Um, I think that, I think the index thing is some, I think it's sometimes like almost more for aesthetic than <laughs> functionality. Um, and if, if finding information again is very important to you, then a tag system is important and I would say that deciding that tag system later is still the better approach because you kind of need to like look at the recurring themes of your notes to figure out how you're going to organize things. Um, with that being said, I don't have, uh, I don't have no organization. So I guess I'll, with that said, I'll switch to talking about rings now. So one of the reasons I switched to using a ring system for my notes is I think that my, you know, 
if you kind of think about like your notes or your information being a little bit like atomic, it helps for them to be modular and movable um, for a couple reasons. Um, first is, and this is just like a functional thing, sometimes I would be, like it's hard to know if you start taking notes on something and then you need to start taking notes on something else, but maybe you haven't finished the book yet. <laughs> then you're like, do I leave pages? Do I, have I left enough pages? And then you start having to deal with like threading pages together and I find that really confusing. I, I just didn't like that. So with the ring system, you can start taking notes and then, you know, it's simple to add another page in between if you start taking more notes on a specific topic. Um, and so, so I think functionally, that's one reason the rings are better, um, especially for taking notes. Uh, another would be just being able to um, move, like talking about the index and finding information, just being able to reorganize your notes is really valuable because, um, you know, again, the way I'm using it, it's, it's a creative support system, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, like I might need notes at a certain time and then I might not need notes at a certain time and I can archive them, <laughs> but I can al always bring them back out again if I do need them. Um, so, I hope that makes sense. But yes, the idea of being able to move my notes around is really valuable uh, in this system. That brings me to um, kind of the way of the topic of organization, which is that um, I use a plotter uh, ring binder as my like, uh, what do you call it? I don't know if daily, daily carry is not the right word, but like my, my, I'm taking notes. These are my notes that I'm using system. So if you're not familiar with Potter, it's basically a really overpriced ring binder <laughs> that has, uh, small rings. And the reason the rings are small by their definition is so you only keep what you need with you, uh, which is true. And I think that's valuable. Uh, for me, it's so that you can actually write in the binder without giant rings in the way personally. Um, but basically like, notes that I'm working on or using will exist in my plotter. And so then in that way, I separated it into just a couple different categories. So I just have notes that I'm currently working on. Um, because again, I mean, maybe there are people out there that just like listen to a whole podcast in one sitting and do the notes and then finish. Um, but I don't, I have to listen to things in chunks, things in <laughs> chunks because I have a kid and I'm busy. Uh, so, you know, I might be reading a book and, you know, it's taking me a while to finish it. So I'm taking notes on the book. Um, I might be working on a project or concept and I'm working on, you know, notes for that. So I kind of keep like the notes in progress and then I divide them with this little ruler with just blank pages. If I just need to start taking new notes. And like I said, because the rings are very small, it's, uh, not at all uncomfortable to just write in the plotter. So and then the next thing I do is I just, I just call it notes and it's just like, it's kind of just things that I want with me right now. Um, so, you know, it might be things that I find inspiring or it might be something like, um, maybe I'm still working on, uh, you know, like these, I did a video on Milan Kundera. So, um, to be honest, I already finished that video, but like, that I just love that book so much that I've really been enjoying looking back at those notes again. <laughs> so I haven't archived them yet. Um, so yeah, just anything I'm kind of like referring to, or like maybe I just, you know, I just finished reading, uh, the article, but I'm still kind of sitting with it. So I will keep it. Um, because again, some of this stuff is like, it inspires my creative writing. So I like to have it. And then I do keep a projects tab. Um, this is something I'm still like, I'm not sure if I really like doing this or not, but, um, I kind of, I think I just have, right now I just have a writing project notes back here. Um, but I, I think it's useful to be able to just have project notes for whatever you're working on also as a part of the system. Um, because a lot of the times, you know, and one of the main reasons for that is like, it's a writing project, but I will also be doing research for it. And those research notes are still notes that I would want in to, to like archive in my commonplace system. Um, so that's a big reason for why I do that. So anyway, so that is, this is an A5 plotter. 
um, so A5 size pages, and, um, that's kind of like, you know, my, I'm working, I'm, this is what I'm, you know, my commonplace, uh, daily driver, and then when I feel like I'm ready to archive notes, um, right now I just have a, I found this on Amazon, it's an A5 binder, of course, it's from, I think that's called Jumping, yeah, Jumping Fox Design, uh, they're pretty affordable, they're like 10 bucks. Um, and they're like a very nice cloth linen, uh, very sturdy, and you know, these are bigger rings, um, of course, but this is just for archiving. So this is basically where I archive the notes, um, and so I separate this currently, so I guess this is ultimately what I would call my tag system, kind of like the dots, um, but it's a little more changeable, which I like, because I might, as my notes grow, I might want to organize it in a different way. So I honestly prefer that to using all the little dots. So I divide it up currently by, I do a separate books tab. And the reason I separate books from the rest of media is just because, like I said, I, I read a lot of books and I really, what I'm hoping to eventually have is a binder that is just book notes. I like the idea of just being able to flip through all the notes I take from books. Um, so that's kind of why I separate it. Um, and this is something I, I haven't finished, but I was kind of working on to like make a list of what I've read this year. Um, but yeah, this is very similar to what you've already seen. Um, just notes that I have archived from the books I've read. Um, the next one I use is media. And so this one is just like articles, podcasts, uh, film and television, that kind of stuff. And then the next one I call, I, I'm calling it commonplace just because this is, this section is pages that I, I guess are more strict in the strictly like copied text and quotes tradition. Um, so these are, these are all like just texts that I've copied from somewhere that I found interesting. So that would be like quotes and stuff too. So these are all like quotes I've collected. And again, these are just things that are personally meaningful to me that I've collected over the years. Not necessarily like, uh, just, I don't just go like, and there's nothing wrong with doing this if it helps you, but I don't just like Google inspirational quotes and just start copying them for me. <laughs> but, um, you know, if that gets you started, there's nothing wrong with that. But again, it's more about like things that I want to collect that really like, uh, mean something to me. Um, I have a tab for research, but <laughs> there's nothing in it currently. Um, I was kind of thinking that would be like, if I'm researching a specific thing and I collect notes on it, that's probably where they would go. And then I saved an archive for projects, so I kind of have some, a couple different things. Um, and, you know, I, again, with this, with this structure, you can add or change and move your notes around, which I think is really great for this kind of thing. Um, again, you know, if you're just making pages and you don't care, like, if it's not a priority to you to, like, find and use the information again, then I don't think rings is necessarily an essential choice. But if you're really going to be using the notes that you create for any kind of creative or knowledge work, then I think, honestly, rings is just a no-brainer for me. Um, but anyway, that's just from my experience, so... So yeah, we talked about we talked about archiving and um, header, index, and tags. So one of the things I wanted to mention is, um, I guess we're just gonna talk about aesthetic. Uh, I feel like uh, <laughs> I feel like I kind of talk. I feel like I have to talk about this in like half the videos I make, but. Um, I, I don't consider the aesthetic of my pages to be the number one thing to focus on. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, I just think that, uh, like I said, for me, I, I view this as a knowledge seeking tool, um, as a creative tool. So I do want my pages to be appealing. Um, 
and I do try to make small improvements in how they look over time, but it's not my number one goal, so, <laughs> um, you know, there are plenty of, um, people doing that that I think are inspiring to look at, and, um, you know, again, I'm not knocking that or anything at all, uh, I like looking at all kinds of different <laughs> pages, um, so, but, uh, you know, I just want to say that's not really what you're going to find here. <laughs> um, so anyway, so the last element of my method to talk about is the margin. Um, so you'll notice that most of my notes have this uh, line to create a margin down the side. Um, this is, you know, as far as I can tell, this is pretty common uh, at least historically, and the reason for this is that basically the margin is a place for you to put your personal thoughts. Um, so, like I said, if you're collecting things that are personally meaningful, you personally meaningful to you, then it's also valuable to put your personal thoughts with those. Um, the reason, one of the reasons, the margin is good for that, especially, you know, in, again, in my opinion, is, uh, one of the things I described about this system is that it's very useful to look back at information and to flip back through, um, in part because you might just find something inspiring, right? Um, but sometimes you look back, <laughs> sometimes you look back at something and you kind of have a, what do you call it? The wisdom of growing, <laughs> the wisdom of living life and having experiences. And you kind of have a new, you know, you have new thoughts about that thing, or you have a new perspective on that thing. And so that's why even um, if you make a note and, you know, like this one where the note doesn't really have anything in the marginalia currently, um, that's totally okay because you might come back to it again later and you may start to have ideas that you fill in. And so that's that's why I think it's such an incredible tool for knowledge and creativity, because the practice of looking back at notes and adding context back to those notes later, uh, make them an incredibly concentrated source of like information or, you know, creative insight. And I think that's that's ultimately how you kind of create those uh, maybe deep moments of, um, understanding. So I'd say one of the, one of the pages I'd really like to show as evidence of that, and I kind of mentioned like how I haven't been able to let go of them yet <laughs> into the archive, is, um, my pages from Milan Kundera. So, <laughs> um, I, I did a video on this book and I'd love if more people watched it because, <laughs> um, I put a lot of work into that video. Um, but basically I, you know, I read a book called The Unbearable Lightness of Being. Uh, it's a really great novel by a Czechoslovakian author. And I just, <laughs> I just got so much out of the book. Um, you know, it, in part, I don't know. See, I, I really just like classic literature because I feel like there is so much to get out of it. But I honestly believe that part of the reason I got so much out of it is because I did this practice along with it. And just to describe like kind of the way that unfolded, I guess I would say, is that um, I read a book, I read with a highlighter, and I highlight as I read. Um, I will say that depending on what I'm, like for literature, I honestly, like I don't necessarily have like a page out as I'm reading, uh, not by rule anyway. Um, sometimes I really do just, I read and I highlight, and then I take my notes after I finish the book. Um, but that's not a hard and fast rule, but in general that my approach is just kind of like, highlight the things that stand out to me. I will sometimes write in the margin of books, but not always. Um, and you know, if there's something I really want to get out as I'm reading, I will. But, um, so basically it's kind of a, you know, I, I start collecting these things from the book uh, that kind of like resonate with me or mean something to me or I want to think more about later. 
And, you know, as I start to put these notes together, you can see that my, my thoughts are starting to unfold about what I'm reading. And um, that kind of continues to the point where <laughs> I actually think I just started right. Yeah, like, I just like all structure kind of went away. Um, and I just kind of started filling like the back page as I was making some like really big leaps in my thinking about um, what was in the book. And um, I, I love this. It's even like, I was like, oh, I like had to write, oh. So I was like really making some connections. And um, I just think that by the end of this, I had such a like a deep understanding and a deep appreciation for the book that I just wouldn't have had if I hadn't gone through this process. Um, and so, and you know, if you want to hear all about the book and all about those thoughts, um, I'll link that video. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm like getting excited just thinking about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think like these notes, again, I haven't let go of them. And that's because these notes to me are such an incredible artifact of like, it's not just information. <laughs> um, and I think that's what makes a commonplace book a commonplace book is that it's not just information. You are writing information. Like, absolutely, you are copying text. Um, but it is the connection that you have to that information and where it takes you as you are, you know, cr creating these notes that I think is really, really special about this practice. Um, so, you know, I, I recommend it. And I think, like, if, if a full-scale commonplacing setup um, seems overwhelming to you, just start making commonplace pages in your journal or in your, you know, if you bullet journal, do it in your, you know, again, that's where I started, right? It's like just writing notes in a bullet journal. So, um, you know, even something as simple as like, uh, you know, just make, make a page with a quote that speaks to you, right? Uh, that, that is like your starting, right? <laughs> and I think those are really great ways to just start. Um, and, I think that you'll find that, you know, even, you know, again, I, I look through old journals and books all the time because I find it really inspiring. And even those bullet journals where, you know, again, I didn't have a formal commonplacing practice, but those little pages are spread in there amongst my other daily living. I just, I love stumbling upon those. They're really special. So um, I would say like, if you're interested in this idea, that's a really good way to just just start and like dip your toes in and don't feel like, you know, don't feel like, oh, I don't have a dedicated notebook with an index and dot stickers and like page numbers and all this stuff. That is not a requirement to commonplace at all. And, um, you know, I really encourage you to, um, again, like if you're new to it and you want to get started, just, just dip your toes in and start somewhere simple because... <laughs> Um, that's really all it takes to be a part of the practice. Um, so, and if you're a little more seasoned and you're looking for just some inspiration on how to kind of evolve your practice, I also hope that this, this video has helped. Um, so yeah, that's about it. I will, again, future video, we're going to talk more about the history, um, of commonplacing. And I just think, uh, one of the reasons I like reading about the history is because I find that it inspires how I do this. And like I said, you know, I didn't always use a margin and stuff. That's something I kind of learned about from um, her research. So, you know, um, draw a margin and write a header and start taking notes. <laughs> That's all I would say. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.